Hey, it's Kat back to talk a little bit more about blogging. And what I thought we'd start with is first of all answering the question of what is a blog? So if we have a look at a few definitions, we can look at dictionary.com and it defines a blog as a type of online diary that someone makes available to other people on the internet. I'd agree with that. Uh, I'd say there's probably a little bit more information that we need to know and I think that wikipedia.com adds a little bit to that by saying that um, first of all, blog is a shortening for the term web log, so it's kind of like a log book. Um, so a blog is a discussion or information site that's published on the World Wide Web consisting of discrete entries called posts that are typically displayed in reverse chronological order, so the most recent post is first. So it's important to remember that it is some kind of a diary and it is in reverse chronological order. So before I give you some examples of some blogs, let's talk a little bit about why people blog. Blogs are for fun, for education, for profit, they're for commenting on a particular subject, they can be for advertising, uh, they can be educational resources which are typically called, typically called an edu blog and they can also just be an online diary. Um, but before you actually set up a blog, you have to have a clear understanding of what it is that you want to blog about and make sure that you come up with some ideas and come up with a bit of a theme and once you start blogging you do need to keep in line with that theme because once you start to get followers if they're following you for an educational purpose so let's say you teach them all about chemistry uh, if you start them blogging about how your weekend was you're going to lose your followers very quickly so it's important that you come up with a theme and then you then stick to that so I've got a few examples of blogs here. Uh, the first one I've got is Programming Zen. So Programming Zen is the URL, so the actual web address, but the blog is called Zen and the Art of Programming. So this one here is a blog that is about programming. And when we look at the popular articles, we can see that it very much keeps in line with things that programmers would be interested in. We can also see some subtopics of Android, Apple databases and so on that gives us a clear idea of what type of stuff is going to be on this blog. So that needs to be clear when you first go to the blog. Okay, so this one is sort of, I'd probably class it as um, commentary on a particular subject but also leaning towards education. I've got another blog here, Technical Blogging and it's called technicalblogging.com at its URL and it's also called Technical Blogging. Now this one happens to be the blog of um, the author of a book on technical blogging and this is where he provides people good ideas about how to blog, how to set it up, how to set it up as a business, all the important things that you might need to know about blogging, uh, particularly in terms of technical blogging. So that's usually in reference to people that are blogging about technical subjects such as programming. The author of this blog also happens to be the author of this Zen and the Art of Programming. Uh, let's look at a different kind of blog. We've got Lisa K Photography which happens to be a uh, Tasmanian girl who's a photographer and this is how she promotes her business and it's also how she um, I guess how she shows off the photos that she's taken to her family, to her friends and to potential customers. So it's got her portfolio some archives, categories, so we know what types of photos that she takes, and some contact details. So this is more a little bit personal, but also advertising, advertising a product or a service. Going on to something, uh, again, more towards the personal ideas. This one, The Bucket Lust, is a chick called Hilary Lust, who does a lot of um, travel. And a lot of people have wanted to follow what she's doing in her travel. So here we've got a picture of Machu Picchu. And then we've got all the stories of her latest travels. So that one's for sort of friends and family, but also for anyone that's looking at traveling, it'll probably have valid information or valuable information on that one. Looking at an edu blog, we've got my own blog, which is computer science at Rosney College. And this is where I blog every lesson. And I also put all class resources for the students, the class notes, practical activities, additional resources. So that's one that I do for educational purposes. 
So each of these blogs had their own purpose and it's important that the purpose is clear when you first go to that blog. Once you've picked your theme and you've decided on what you want to blog about and you've had a bit of a think about what kind of look and feel that you want to create, you then need to pick a tool to use to create your blog. So there are quite a few around. Um, I've just come up with six fairly common ones. The first one I've got here is wordpress.com and when you go to the site wordpress.com you can click get started here to go through the setup phase or you can look at a couple of blogs that are already hosted on WordPress just to get a feel for the designs that you like but also what people are blogging about. Okay, so one of these free tools is wordpress.com. Another one is blogger.com. And Blogger is a Google-owned product. Um, I find that blogger.com is a little bit easier to get started with than with WordPress, but for me, WordPress has a little bit more of a professional feel. Uh, so I actually blog with both WordPress and Blogger. I use wordpress.com for my high-level computer classes for computer science, and I use Blogger for my lower-level class for multimedia. Uh, and the students blog with Blogger as well. So it's important that they are blogging on the same interface that I am. Uh, they're the only two I've used. Some other ones that I know of are tumblr.com and livejournal.com, typepad.com and posterous.com. I'm sure there are many other products and I think it's probably just a matter of choosing one and running with it. Um, probably have a look at some blogs that are created with those different um, sites if you can. It might help you decide which interface you're going to prefer. Um, I like wordpress.com but it's, you know, you've got to figure out what's going to work for you. Then pick it and then go through the sign up process. So I'm going to create two more tutorials. One is going to go through the basic sign up process and set up process of a basic blog with wordpress.com. And I'll also do one with blogger.com just so you can have a little bit of a look at the process of setting up a very basic blog. All right, stay tuned.